Hey guys, so today I'm going to be speaking about a step-by-step -step guide that should help you in stopping overthinking. And coming from a person that has been a massive overthinker, but has been able to kind of control it a little bit over quarantine, I want to share what I think kind of works um, to get rid of this, honestly, disease, I think, because it takes over your life if you just are thinking 24-7 all the time. So let's get into it. <laughs> I'm just going to be going over like five steps that I think if you really do them properly you can at least diminish the way that you overthink. For step one, you've got to accept that the way that your brain is wired right now is wrong. There's two of you and you and your mind are two different things. Your mind is the monkey and you are the controller. And what happens with overthinkers I think and people that tend to let their emotions and their thoughts control them is that the monkey has just gone completely out of control. The same way if we let a dog out not on its leash without its owner, it would go out of control because it's not trained. And what school doesn't teach us, what no one, most people don't teach us is how to actually control the mind the same way that we're taught to strengthen a muscle. So the monkey is the crazy one and we're trying to get as much of you as possible because you are not an overthinker, you are just a still being. And the way you can think about this is think about the last time you were in adrenaline mode or you were having fun or you were in a competition about something. That's the state that we need to have as much as possible. That's you and it's attainable. We can get there, but it's really difficult to completely be there, but at least we can sometimes be there and not have our overthinking thoughts kind of kill us, you know? So the first thing to do is to recognize that your mind, the monkey, is something that you can control and train. And that's what you've got to begin to do. You've got to begin to rewire how it's working. For step two, you've got to accept and let thoughts just come. The thing that most overthinkers do is that they try to push away thoughts. They try to pretend that those negative thoughts aren't there or they try to stop these bad thoughts or these racing thoughts from coming. This actually makes the thoughts more powerful and this is what we need to avoid. We need to let all those thoughts come. But what happens is when you let thoughts come is that you begin to step outside of the mind and you begin to kind of see it from over here. And you begin to look at it as if it's like a show, a funny show of what's going on. It, it will seem comical about how ridiculous everything that's going on if you allow the thought to come in. And when you give no energy to it, when you say, just come, I'm not stopping you, you're using less resistance and when there's no energy the thought disappears very quickly but when we give it energy when we say don't think about it don't think about it we think about it you've got to let accept thoughts coming in and just provide no resistance to them we need to now get to that sort of stillness thing that isn't the mind that thing that is truly us and the only way to do that and to gain that is by beginning to meditate. Meditation can be seen in so many different forms and this is a misconception, I think. You need to find something that really t pulls you into the present moment. Most common ways though are people do, you know, do mindfulness, they do meditation, which if you wanna do that, then I would recommend doing Headspace. There's like a free trial. If not, YouTube has tons of meditation videos that you can use. Yoga, which I found useful recently, which is really just connecting the body to, to you, not to and really letting the mind go, which is really useful. Because when you concentrate on the breath, which is about what meditation, what yoga really about, then you really connect with the body and you start, this starts being kind of just dropped away. It starts becoming a bit calmer, which is what we want. Ultimately, what overthinkers suffer with is they look over here and over here the future and the past. This is our main concern of thought because if we only focused on the present, there wouldn't be so much to think about. It would only really be a few things. So if that's it, then the trick is we need to stay as much as possible in the present moment, which is what meditation allows the mind to slowly build up the skill of, which is why it's important. Fourth step is begin to question and eliminate thoughts. And what I mean by that is so now that you've started to train the mind to meditate, which means to take it out of constant, you know, machine working 24 seven. So it's taking a little break. So the mind's starting to learn that it's okay for it to not 
think all the time. But when these thoughts come, now we might still be annoyed. We might be annoyed that they're still coming because we're working on trying to be in the moment and we get irritated when the other ones come. This is natural though, this will always happen. And so what we've got to do is we begin to We've got to be good at dealing with these thoughts when they come in. Like I said before, we don't provide resistance to them, we allow them to come. But then we question them and we say, why is this thought kind of coming in right now? So if I'm speaking to someone I love and they've got a really bad situation going on and they're overloading on me and telling me a lot and it's beginning to stress me out and I'm beginning to overthink about it and I'm beginning to think about the future and our relationship and them and everything. It, it, it puts me in a massive spiral, but you've got to really ask yourself, can I control this situation? Is it my problem? As selfish as that sounds, if you can answer no to that, you will avoid much overthinking. And when you realize that there is so much that you can do to help someone, I think life becomes a little bit easier. Not to say that you shouldn't be there for your friends, in the moment you give love and attention and you you tell them what you can do for them and you, you do what they need. But when you guys aren't speaking and when you're on off time, you cut that problem off and you just separate. We really need to think, is this something I can control? Is it my problem? Can I actually do something about this? And usually when it's someone else's problem, there isn't much you can do. It needs to be a realization that they have. You know, so you've got to let them come to it on their own. Nudging them too much is only going to cause resentment. You can provide advice and if they don't take it, you step back and you be a good friend and you take care of them, you know? So step five. Now I think we need to take a step outside of the mind and you need to eliminate your exterior surroundings. The exterior, your exterior world is a reflection of your interior world. So if you're messy and if you've got tons of stuff everywhere, that's a complete reflection of your mind because you're all over the place. So you don't have the time or the will to take care of your space and your belongings and the things around you. So it reflects, but, and this is not only about personal space, this is also about our connections and the people in our close circle. So if you see that someone is only bringing stress, it's like 70 or 80% of what they bring to you, even 50% stress rather than happiness, and they are triggering overthinking thoughts, perhaps it's worth speaking to them or considering not having them so close to you in your life. Um, so yeah, so I would recommend cleaning your room, making, when, you're, when your outside looks good, you feel good, you know? And these are gonna stop thoughts coming because if your desk is a mess, you've got a million books everywhere, your bed is a mess, your kitchen's a mess, you're just adding piles of thoughts that are just unnecessary if you've dealt with them. You're gonna be thinking about your life, then about the kitchen, then about the room and about, oh. just cut it. Just take a little bit of self-care all the time to try clean up. So that's it for like my five steps. And it, I think it takes like a really long time. Like it's not just a five day kind of process, but I, I really do think that it is effective in like lessening thoughts at least a little bit um so that's it i hope that my tips help and yeah let me know if it helped you and if there's anything else that you do so thank you guys